بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ویلکم بیک ٹو دی چینل وے ٹو ڈے وی ڈو وٹ وی اسٹارٹ اے نیو ٹاپک اینڈ دا نیو ٹاپک از وٹ از دا نیو چیپٹر چیپٹر نمبر تھری آف دا بک بائی پولر جنکشن ٹرانزسٹرس اسمالر ٹاپک تھری اور فور ٹاپکس اسمال چیپٹر تھری اور فور ٹاپکس بٹ ویری امپارٹنٹ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ رائٹ Yes. So, let us give the heading. Bipolar junction transistor. We're done with the diode thing. Right? So, we have a bipolar junction transistor. Now, let me tell you one other thing. You will be watching this video somewhere around my birthday. Right? My birthday is 3rd February. So you will be watching it somewhere around there, maybe on that date. So you need to wish me a happy birthday in the comment section, right? Yes. So anyways, bipolar junction transistor. Now what is this? We are moving a step further of the PN junction diode, right? So first we will see what these terms means. What does this term mean? Now, uh, the simpler thing is the junction you know. The junction you know that this is the simple PN junction. It's referring to the PN junction, the metallurgical junction of the diode. Right? Yes. Now, what is this bipolar means? So, bi means two, polar means polarity. So, this means what? That you, you, you have holes and electrons in a diode, right? Majority, minority, n type, b type, you know that things. You have two types of charge carriers. So, this bipolar refers that both the charge carriers, that is both electrons and holes will conduct, will be current carriers. Right? Yes. So, bipolar junction is a transistor. So, transistor comes from two words. Transistor comes from transfer plus resistance. So, which means you will be transferring the resistance. And what does this mean? So, you'll understand it as we go on and on. You will transfer from a lower resistance to a higher resistance. At the input side, you will have a lower resistance. At the output side, you will have a higher resistance. Right? So that would be an amplification, amplification point of view. When you transfer from a lower resistance to a higher resistance, the current in the network will remain the same. So the output voltage would be greater than the input voltage. Right? So this is it. The, a weak signal is implied at the, at the input side. So we get an amplified version at the output side from the higher resistance. So this is what the transfer plus resistor means. So this is for the heading. Right? Now when was this invented? So this was invented shortly after the after our independence, right? 1947. So this was invented in December 1947. Bipolar junction transistor was invented in December 1947. Now the, the names of the scientists who invented these are written in the book. William Shock, Shockley or Shotkey, an important person, we'll, we'll be discussing him further as well. We have Dr. John Bardeen and, and I have the names over here in the book. Anyways, it doesn't matter. William Shockley, John Bardeen, Walter Bracken. It was discovered in 1947 and the, and the team of the three got a Nobel Prize in 1956. We are not interested anyways. We are not interested anyways. Let me take this call please. Okay. So where were we? Anyways. The call disturbed me very much. I should not have picked it up. I wasted a lot of time of mine and break my momentum. The thing is momentum. When I am starting a new topic, you know, I'm very much frightened. I just cannot start a new topic. And once I started, I have to maintain that momentum. And now that momentum is gone. So I, I don't think I would be able to recover. Anyways, anyways, let's see. Let's see. So PNP tra transistor, bipolar junction transistor. Now we've got two types of the transistor based on the construction and what are that so that are pnp and npn transistors the two types are p n p and n p n 
So, you know what this happens now. So, so you can see one is the p-time material, n-time material. So, p and p and p. And so, from here you can see that you have three regions. You would have three regions in the bipolar junction transistor. And what are those three regions? So, one of them is the emitter. The second is the base. And the third one is the collector emitter base and collector so depending on the things that we want we would have an emitter to be p type we can have it to be n type so let's see let's see you have an emitter you have a base you have a collector this is your emitter terminal base and this is your you have the corresponding terminals emitter terminal base terminal and the collector terminal now depending on the type of the transistor you want you can have it n p or n so which means in the n p n transistor the emitter would be n the base would be p and the collector would be n again wait for let's say for instance you have n p n transistor so for an n p n transistor the emitter would be n the base would be p and the collector would be n again the corresponding terminals similarly for your p n p transistor for the p n p transistor the emitter would be p the base would be n and the collector would be p again p type and n type materials what do we have in the p type materials we have what the majority carriers are holes right majority is equal to holes minority is equal to electrons similarly in the n type the majority is electrons and the minority is hole yes yes so now what do you have now what do you have so this is your npn transistor now have a look so you have a one pn junction you have another pn junction so which means what that you have got two pn junctions one is this one and the other one is this one so one is the so i have a look i would write over here this is equal to two right one would be the emitter base junction the other would be the collector base junction which is equal to emitter base plus collector base so we have got the two junctions then depending on the operation we want we would be forward biasing and reverse biasing them so you could say that these are two diodes connected back to back pn pn two diodes pn pn two diodes connected back to back yes yes so because of this because of this, this is also called a bijunction transistor simply in, in 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 place of the bipolar this is also called a bijunction transistor why because of the number of junctions that are two so bijunction transistor let me check keep checking over here what do i have now so we've got two depletion regions also right now the widths the widths of the two and the doping of the two so the width the width of the emitter is the greatest then you have no the width of the collector is the greatest yes width of the collector is the greatest then you have that for the emitter and the width of the base is the least similarly the doping concentration the doping concentration is the greatest in the emitter again then the collector is moderately doped and then the base is the most lightly doped yes yes now reasons so they have got its own reasons and i am just coming to them okay okay so the construction let's say we talk about the construction high doping means what high doping means you have high charge carrier concentration so the conductivity would be greater the resistivity would be less yes yes so now what do you have now what do you have you may also have the symbol of the uh, symbol of the bjt 
you may also have the symbol of the BJT and let me just draw it so for NPN let's say so you have a you have a circle you have a circle like this you have a straight line you have a straight line representing the base this line is representing the base then you have one line at this side the other line at this side right so this one is representing the collector and this one is representing the emitter right isn't it like this it is similarly i can draw for the p and p transistor as well you have a circle you have a straight line that is representing the base you have a line like this that is the collector and you have a line like this that is the emitter now what is the difference in between the two so the difference would be provided by an arrow and what would be that arrow so you know that the electrons would flow from the n to p side yes electrons I would write that it would flow from N to P side. So which means that the current direction that I will take will be taking the conventional current direction. So that would be flowing from the P to N side. So I would just place it over here. So if this is my NPN transistor, so P to N, so the arrow would be in this particular direction. Similarly, this is a PNP transistor. So the current would P, N and P. N P N so so this opposite we will have an arrow in this direction this is for an N P N transistor similarly for P N P transistor it would be like this and isn't it like this for P N P it is upwards right yes it is why so it is dependent on the on the direction of the current that is the conventional current direction now uh, why, which one of them is preferred so generally the NPN transistor is preferred generally the NPN transistor is preferred why because the mobility of the electrons is greater than the mobility of holes and you know what the mobility is it's the relative speed of them inside the crystal right so if the mobility of the electrons is greater than that of holes so which means the current would be greater because of the electrons why because the current is directly proportional to the relative mobility of the charge carrier now now that now coming to the doping levels so so what do you have doping the emitter has the highest doping highest doping now doping means what you have more doping implies that you have a high charge carrier concentration high doping high doping implies what that you have a high charge carrier concentration charge carrier concentration so if this is the case the conductivity would be greater and if the conductivity is greater the resistivity would be less the resistivity would be less so anyways now why the 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 the, the emitter has the highest doping which means why the emitter has more number of free electrons because it will act as a source of the charge carriers emitter has the highest doping so doping because it is acting as a source of charge carriers In NPN case electrons, in PNP case holes. We will understand this when we are talking about the operating principle of this. For now, this you have understood it. Right? Yes. Mostly this is in the powers of 10 to the power 18. NE is greater than 10 to the power 18. Right? Yes. So we are done with one page. The second page. Base is moderately doped the base is moderately doped the collector is basically moderately doped or you could say it is lightly doped as well as compared to this the major thing is the emitter right then you have in between the you have collector and base so collector is the moderate one now the collector is you could say lightly doped to achieve what to achieve a higher breakdown 
the collector doping is less than that of the emitter you could say because the reason is to achieve a higher breakdown to achieve higher breakdown now how to achieve higher breakdown so we've seen that the avalanche breakdown the zener breakdown so you know very well that we have the avalanche breakdown the avalanche breakdown occurs where at a higher values of the reverse bias potential and that occurs in lightly doped materials in lightly doped materials right yes yes now the base the base is again lightly doped why the base is lightly doped why because it and it is also thin light doping light doping ld plus it's also thin why because we want little recombination we want little recombination and we want what the maximum current to flow to the collector this is what we want this is what we want if the current is coming if the let's say npn transistors you have you have electrons in the n side and if it goes into the base that is the p side so it will recombine why because the majority carry will be the whole but we do not want it we want it to majority of the electrons coming from the n side to go directly into this n side surpassing the intermediate p region so for that we lightly dope it so that the number of chances of recombination reduces also the width is less so that with a with a greater velocity it directly crosses the base region and directly moves into the collector region yes yes so this was about the area so now the width of it so the base width you have understand why is it thin right similarly the emitter is moderate uh, so a normal width of the emitter region so we don't have to discuss that as well now the the collector has the greatest width why so the collector has the greatest width and why is that because it has to collect the charge carriers right it has to collect the charge carrier this may be one reason collect charge carriers and I, and I have the main reason for this is that the collector base junction is reverse biased the collector base junction for we will be actually talking about the active mode of operation so what is that so i'm telling you but this collector base junction this base this pn junction this is basically reverse biased so if the collector base junction is reverse biased so you would have a power loss we talk about the power losses so that would be what the power loss would be v collector base into i collector ic so this is basically very high so this is very high and so in order to radiate the heat produced in order to radiate the heat produced we have the collector weight to be the greatest to radiate the heat produced due to this power loss is that fine it is so I believe this is an end of introduction to the PN junction diode and still if you have any question so you can ask me right now but I think you cannot ask right now so you have the comment section of course the regions of operation I can talk about regions of operation of the diode regions of operation so basically you've got two two junctions one is the emitter base junction the other is the collector base junction so depending on the forward bias and the reverse bias of both emitter base collector base right so we have we can have four possible possibilities because we have two two chances right so two to the power two is four so what could be those possibilities so let me write it so the first and the most important is that if the emitter base junction is forward biased emitter base is forward biased and the collector base is reverse biased so in this case the the mode of operation is called the active mode of operation and over here the transistor would act as an amplifier 
as an amplifier. The second mode is when both of them are forward biased. When both of them are forward biased. So this mode is called the saturation mode and in the saturation mode the, the, the BJT would act as a logical on switch. Logical on switch. Similarly, I have other two, so I would write them over here. When the emitter base is reverse biased, collector base is forward biased, so in that case, we have the cutoff mode. Reverse biased and reverse biased, when both of them are reverse biased. So that is the cutoff mode of operation. And in this cutoff mode of operation, this BJT would act as an off switch. So this is basically the mode and this is what the transistor is acting as, act as. And similarly, if this one is reverse biased and this one is forward biased, so this one is known as an inverse active mode, inverse active mode. And in this case, what happens is this is not used. In this case, the role of the emitter and the source interchanges. Role of emitter and collector interchanges. What do I mean by that? Now the collector would play the role of an emitter and the emitter would play the role of a collector. Right? So this is basically an unused one. So anyways, I believe this is an NF introduction. Let me see if we have any point. So invented by John Bardeen, Walter Breton and William Shockley at the Bell Telephone Laboratories in December 1947, right, is a three terminal device, uh, doped semiconductors, uh, so it is used, so BJT has two, the most applications are two, the two applications and the number one is amplification, amplification of weak signals, right, and the second is switching. So have a look, it has got number one as the analog application and number two it has got a, a, a digital application as well. So you have an NPN, PNP transistor. So three regions, two junctions, the dopings, the widths. So we have studied it everything. Let me see if I have anything in the book. So the book has its history. You will find that all amplifier devices that increase the voltage, current or power level have at least three terminals in which with one controlling the flow of potential between the other two. So if these are the three terminals, emitter, base and collector, so whenever you have the amplifier sort of a circuit, so you will have three terminals at least and one of the terminal would be controlling the flow or the flow of current or the potential between the other two and that is what we see in a greater detail in the upcoming videos. Right? Yes. The emitter layer is heavily doped with the base and collector only lightly doped. Right? Yes. The outer layers have been much greater than the sandwiched layer. So you've got everything. Bipolar refers to this and that. That is it for me for this video. See you in the next video with the working principle of basically how it works. So we'll either take a PNP or we'll take an NPN and we'll understand the working. So till the next video, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.